everyone and welcome to our watercolor class for beginners today. My name is Danny Lee and I am the Lifelong Learning and Wellness Program Manager here at ACC and I have a very special guest here today with us and so uh, some of you may have tuned in to some of our other productions here uh, with Mary Ellen Burns from the Renaissance Society and she was uh, happy enough to connect us with Kathy Hart here, who happens to be the marketing and communications director for Friendship Force and Renaissance Society. They are two really great and wonderful cultural organizations that we're really hoping to partner with more in the future. And uh, maybe Kathy can even tell us a little bit about uh, what's going on with the Renaissance Society because they have some really exciting things coming up this summer in person and for free. And so uh, I'm going to go ahead and let you take it over from here, but we are so lucky and happy to have her. This is Kathy Hart. Thanks, Danny. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let's see. The Renaissance Society has um, programs for, and I'm not sure how many Fridays, but starting next Friday, not this Friday, next Friday in June, um, there are on-campus programs that are open to the community and free. They include a seminar and then very interesting tours such as a tour of the planetarium, the new planetarium on campus. But there's lots of other things. Wonderful speakers, a variety of topics. So just Google Renaissance Society Sac State or Sacramento State and that'll take you to our website and then you look for the summer program information. So that's the information on Renaissance and Friendship Force, another wonderful organization I belong to. We're all about um, exploring, to understand, and then serve. So well, how do we do that? Well, we host people from around the world and around the U.S. in our homes for a week. We host a group, and then we take them around our community, and we become very fast friends. And we also travel and are hosted by people from abroad or other places in the United States. We believe that a world of friends leads to a world of peace. So we also do amazing cross-cultural um, events and experiences locally. The last one that we did was on Saturday, we went down to Locke and did their Asian Pacific Festival. It was fabulous, we loved it. We had a group that went down, we totally enjoyed it. So what I like to do in some of my free time is I like to be creative. And one of the ways I'm creative is I paint. I paint with both acrylics and watercolor. Today we're going to do a very simple watercolor. I like to do small paintings, a couple of reasons. I don't like to spend 10 hours on a painting. I'm actually just way too busy to do that. But I love to be able to use what I create. And so I put together small paintings and then I use them. Okay, I don't think you can see that. I make cards with them. And then I send them out or I give them as hostess gifts. A lot of times when I'm traveling, you know, I will um, give out hostess gifts if someone hosts us for dinner or whatever. I'm going to a dinner tonight. I'll take some of my watercolor cards as a hostess thank you gift. So we're going to do a fun painting today. What I want to do, I want to start out by drawing the, the uh, watering can or flower pot. So what you can do with your paper, you need your watercolor paper, paper or cardstock, watercolor papers preferred. You need your paints, couple of paint brushes, one that's not really big, some water and a paper towel. And if you have a pencil with eraser, that's perfect. I want you to lightly draw on your, um, on your paper. I'm going to draw it on a large piece of paper and I'm going to use a Sharpie. I'm doing that so you can see it. I don't want you to draw in a Sharpie because you'll see it through your, your watercolor. You can even see pencil through watercolor if you, especially if you do a hard line. So you want to do kind of a soft line, but the idea is just to give yourself kind of some boundaries. So we're going to start and we're going to go about a little lower than halfway on your paper. So whatever your paper is, and we're going to draw a little bit of a diagonal line. Okay, so that's one side of the pot or the watering can. Then I'm going to go to the other side, maybe a, depending on the size of your paper, you know, a little bit. Um, you're just going to do a mirror image of that. 
I need to go a little higher on the top. Now on the top, we're going to do a thin oval. So I want to go down a little bit for the bottom. And now I'm going to go up a little bit for the top. And that just makes it look like we've got the opening to your can. And for your flowers, well, you'll need a little bit of green and then whatever color you want your flowers to be. I've got, I've got some blue, purple, pink in mine, but you can do whatever color you want. Do you want yours yellow and orange? Do you want it all red? Doesn't matter, it's fine. So now I'm going to move my drawing and we're going to talk about how to do the flowers because we're actually not going to draw it. We're going to paint it. So I'm going to go ahead and add what's called activate my paint. So I'm adding some water to my paint. I have very inexpensive um, paint, a little palette here that I got from Michaels. It probably cost about six dollars, so it's very inexpensive. I have more expensive paints, but I'm not worried about bringing that here. I want you to know you can you can do this and you don't need a lot of expensive paint. One thing that is nice is if you don't, you don't have to use the colors the way they're, they're in your palette. So I'm mixing, okay, let me move this over. I'm mixing some green here that I have from my palette, but that is a really bright green. Let me show you how bright that is. See how bright that is? It's kind of like a Christmas green, very bright. Well, that's not really a natural green, so I'm going to mute it. And the way you mute it is you add an opposite color. So I've got kind of a golden yellow. I'm gonna put a little bit of my golden yellow in that green. And now I wanna show you the difference in the color. Well, that's kind of gold. Let's make it a little more green. Do you see how I'm just mixing colors to get something that I'm more I'm happier with. That looks a little more natural to me. Like I would see that in nature somewhere. Okay, so let's talk about how we do these flowers. We're going to take some of your green, get that green on your brush, and we're going to draw a line, but I don't want you to be super angular. Think about nature, it's flowing, it's got some curve to it. So you don't want a straight line. Let's think about doing you know, more of a curved line. And I actually don't want you to do the whole line, I want you to skip. So what I mean is like this, little bit, uh, kinda like that. Can you see it? So I'm drawing a line but I'm skipping. And I'm not doing a straight line that's that's not what we want. I did that kind of bold, so that is a no. And we're gonna just kind of skip and do a little bit of curving. Skip, that's how we're going to do it. I'm just telling you how we're going to do it, okay? We'll probably do whatever fits in your, um, in the top of your, uh, your um, watering can. So that, oh, wait a second, that's just the stem. So now let's talk about the actual flowers. I just want you to see how easy these are. So I'm going to take a color that you can see. So I'm going to take a little bit of a darker color. It's not exactly dots, because if you do dots, that's too symmetrical. That's not how nature is. It's more blobs, okay? And we're going to start with smaller blobs at the top and we're going to kind of come out a little bit wider at the bottom and we're going to get a little more irregular. So let me show you what I mean. Let's see. Okay. So up at the top, I am kind of going to do some dots. Now you can always go back in and add it, but do you see how I'm going over my I'm going over my line and they're irregular. Some are like flatter and getting larger as I come down. And you can go as far as you want, but I'm actually going to go all the way down. This is a made up flower. This is not a real thing. It's just something that looks nice. 
And I'm just doing this on actually just regular um, computer paper. But you can see what I'm doing here. So see, there's no, boy, you really have to have a steady arm. No, you don't. You're just making blobs as you come down. OK, and I'll stop there. Now, what we might want to do is say, oh, that looks, that's fine. But let's uh, maybe put a little bit of a second color in there. Just a little bit. Maybe I want it, maybe up at the top I want a lighter pink. So I'm going to come back in. And I can sometimes touch it and sometimes not. And I'm adding a lighter pink. And if you say, well, you know, I'd like a couple of little green leaves in there. All right. Let's just do a couple of little green leaves. And how am I doing a green leaf? Very basic. I'm going to make it larger here so you can see. OK, I'll do it right here. Press and pull. Press and pull. That's larger than what I'd have on the painting, but that's how you do it. So you put your tip down, press and pull, press and pull. Very basic leaf. So that's how we're going to make the flowers. I just wanted to go into a little bit of detail and show you in a bigger um, example how that would work. Let's start painting now. And I want you to activate either a blue or gray or whatever color you want the pot. We're going to paint that first. So let's activate that up. I'm going to make a little bit of a gray, and I think I might put just a hint of blue in there. And I'm going to do plenty of water because I want a light color. And I'm checking it out, and that seems pretty dark to me. So I'm adding more water to mine. OK. Now all you're going to do is fill in where you made your, your paint can. You're just basically going to do a light wash. Now, I have quite a bit of um, paint on this paintbrush. So what I'm going to do, this is why you have a paper towel, is I'm going to take my paper towel and just dab it because I don't want it too wet. I don't want it making the whole thing really, really wet. So let's see how if I took off too much. Nope, it's fine. So I'm going to start, and you're just going to paint in your can. Just following the lines, light wash. You can always go over it again to make it darker. It's much easier to make watercolor darker, but you can make it lighter. Let me show you what you can do. I'm going to do it. I don't really want to do it on my watercolor paper, but it works best on watercolor paper. Um, maybe I can do it on the back of this. All right, let's say I've painted something right here. I'm just doing it in the corner because I don't really want to mess that up. And now I decide, oh, you know what? I don't like that. I am not happy. I put my brush in the water. I tapped it on my paper towel to get any remaining color off. Now I'm going to add water, and I'm just going to put water on top of that place where I just put the paint that I no longer want. I'm doing it again, adding water, take a clean paper towel, and you lift color that way. That's the way you can either lighten your, your uh, whatever you've painted, or you can remove color. OK, so let's finish our watering can. We want to go on both the handle and the spout part. And actually, we want to do the top as well. I don't know why I didn't fill that in.
So I'm going to fill in that top. And I'm going to do the handle. This one's a square handle that I did. Remember, there rarely is there a right and a wrong way. It's just different techniques, different styles, and it's all art. I want you to think about it. When you were young, when all of us were young, and we would make a picture for our parents, we were so proud of that picture, and we thought, I am an amazing artist. And probably your parents said, oh, that's so beautiful. And you believed it, and you, because it was beautiful. But then around, it might be, I don't know, fifth or sixth grade, we start comparing our art to others' art, and we decide we are no longer artists. And I want you to tell you, that's a lie. You're all artists, and you're all awesome. So it's just different. It's your art. So after that little spiel, my, my painting looks like it's dry, but I want to add just a little bit of texture to it or, or a dimension. So what I'm going to do is on my left side, see how this is a little bit darker? That's just a second coat. Same thing on the bottom and underneath the spout. So just add a little bit more to the left side, the bottom, and under the spout. That's going to give it a little bit of a shadow. And I'm actually going right under the top, too. And you don't want that to be a sharp line. So what I do is I just take my paintbrush and I just kind of brush it towards the other one, but it gets lighter and lighter. I'll show you what I mean on the bottom. See, I'm adding paint, and it's kind of a line. Well, I don't want a line. I don't want it that strong. So I'll actually, I'll tap it on my, on my paper towel, get some of the paint off, and then I'm just going to move that paint towards the center, and it'll slowly and surely lighten up. Don't be afraid to turn your painting. Whatever makes it more comfortable. See how I'm just slowly blending that up. And then I've gotten rid of that line. Yes, it's darker on the bottom, but it's not a line. I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom of the spout. I'm going to go along the edge. And then I'm going to move that paint to the center so it just looks a little bit darker on that spot. Okay, how are we doing, folks? You doing okay? I think we're ready to start the flower part. So, what you do is activate your color, whatever colors you decide you want. I think I'm going to do some blue and a little pink and maybe some purple. But first, remember when we did our practice, first we do our dotted lines. And you might want to do whatever fits. I, I think I'm going to probably do about five. Okay, so you want to take your, your painting and we'll actually start what looks like the inside of the pot. So don't do it at the very top. Don't start here. Start closer to the front of the pot because it's really going inside the pot. Okay, so let's take our lines, remember dotted and slightly curved. So I'm going to start here, I'm going to bring it out, and then I'm just going to make a couple of little dotted lines. I'm actually going way over on that one, that's all right. However many you want, because you're going to, remember you're going to fill in the space, so you have to leave a little bit of space. 
one of the things that typically looks better are odd numbers rather than even. It just is more pleasing to the eye. So you might want to think about either 3 or 5 or 7. So we're putting in our stems. I think I'm going to do 5. And while we don't have it all with the flower part yet, let's put in a couple of leaves. Remember how we did those leaves? Touch it, press, and pull. Touch, press, and pull. That's a leaf. That's a basic leaf. So let's just do a couple of little leaves. I think I'll put one to the right of my pot, kind of coming over the front a little. Okay, so I want to show, I've got a little bit of a pool of paint on my leaf. So what I did is I tapped off the color. So my brush is somewhat dry. I'm going to go into that leaf and I'm going to lift color because it has a bit too much. See how I did that? I just tapped off my brush, put it back on my leaf, and now it basically sucked up the paint. That's what you can do if you get a pool of paint with too much water. So I put a little leaf there. I'm going to do one on the other side. Just enough so it's got a little bit of green. I think I'll do one sort of off center here. Okay, so I've got three leaves and five stems. I'm now ready to do my flowers coming down. And remember what we talked about, we kind of start off a little smaller, we get bigger and blobbier, I don't know how else to say it. Irregular shapes, I guess that's a little better. Um, whatever colors you want, I'm gonna start with I think a blue on my first one and see how I'm turning my painting it's easier for me I can see it and I'm gonna pull the flower towards me or paint towards me so I turned my I'm gonna do this one first I'm gonna start at the top and then come down so don't be afraid to turn your paper to whatever makes it easier if it's easier for you to do it upside down that's great I, it's not for me so I'm gonna start here and remember I'm going to do more like a dot at the top and then I'm going to be working on irregular shapes. As you use your paint it naturally kind of loses its intensity which means it looks like it's almost a different color but that's kind of nice. And I'm bringing that blue all the way down. I'm going to get just a little bit more bringing it all the way down to the top of the pot. And I think what I'm going to do is take a little bit of my purple and put that in. And I actually I'm putting it on top of my blue just to give that a little different. A little variation in the color. So that's my first one. How we doing folks? Okay. Good. Pick your color for your second one. We're going to do the exact same thing. Starting at the top, smaller dots at the top, irregular shapes as you move down. Don't forget, paint over your stem. Don't leave that stem completely exposed. And we slightly widen it as we come down. We're just doing those irregular shapes, but we see a little bit of the green peeking through all the way down to the pot. Well, what do you do when there's a blue flower or whatever your first color is? You decide, is the flower you're painting in front of that flower or behind? 
if it's behind the flower, then you won't paint on top of it because it's behind the, like in my case, I'm going to leave it behind. If you wanted it in front, you would actually put it in front. So I'm going to leave mine behind and just put some pink coming down. So I've finished my second one and I'm not going to add a second color to that. And now your, whatever color your next flower is, same thing. We're going to do that for all of your stems. I've got a purple on this one. None of mine look alike. They are similar enough to where the eye thinks they are the same thing. But there, I'm not even worried about trying to make anything match in terms of like how I do the blobs. I just want the general shape to be similar. I'm going to have my purple one behind my pink. And I think I'm actually going to do it behind whatever I do next too. So I'm not doing a really thick I think on that one, I'm going to take a darker blue and just put a couple of little blue. Ooh, that's really blue. There we go. That is very blue. So I added a dark blue on top of my purple, kind of made it a nice little combo. Okay, and I'm going to do my next one. I'm actually going to go back to one of the other colors. I think I'll do pink again. Doing those irregular shapes coming down. This one for me will be in front of my purple one. Just dabbing almost with my paintbrush. And I have one more to go, so I think I'm going to go back to my, I think I'm going to go back to this light blue I had. And I'm not going to put purple on that one. I'm just going to leave it blue. So when you're done, look up and I'll know you're ready to do the shadow. But take your time, no rush. I've done this several times. And take a look at your flowers. Do you feel like you covered the stem enough? I kind of feel like my stem here is showing a bit too much. So I'm going to go back in. I think I used this color. I'm going to put a little bit more red on the top. Just don't want quite so much stem showing. Same thing with this one. Or if you want a slightly darker color, you can add more paint. There we go. That looks better. Does anybody online have a question? We're kind of waiting for folks to get caught up. Was there a chat? I can't read it. Okay. We have a microphone here if you want to ask questions. Okay. 
Any questions from the folks who are here? If not, no worries. Just want to give you an opportunity. Okay, great. Well, let's go ahead and do a light wash for the shadow. So this is what I'm talking about right here. Hold on. John, can we do overhead? Yes. Thanks. Okay, so what we're going to paint in, let me move this so you can see it, is a very light shadow. Now you don't want that the same color as your pot. So if you did kind of like I did, which was a, a gray blue, you might go with a very, very light tan, or you can take the same color you did for your pot and just lighten it. So how do you lighten it? You would add more water. So I'm going to add a little water and probably add just a little lighter color. Let me see. I'm going to test my color. That still is very, very close. So let me add this. Okay, that's a br more of a brown. So I'm going to use that. And there isn't, like, you're not going to follow a specific area. You're just going to kind of come from the pot and go to the left. Just imagine sun is coming from the right, the top right. So there's going to be a shadow on this side. So it'll be your left bottom side. So take a little bit of your shadow color. And I'm going to just come away from my pot. I actually am going to go all the way up to my pot. And I'm just going to put in just a hint. If I want to spread that same color around, I take the paint off, or I actually it's the same color, so you don't have to take it off. But I add water on my brush, and then I can move my color. So that's something that's just kind of good to know if you want to add a little bit of color, but or you already have color on and you don't really want to add more, but you want to spread it out, just use some water. And what I'm going to do, once I've got kind of like the basis of my shadow, is I'm going to go right next to the pot and just do a little darker line. Remember how we did a little extra color at the bottom of the, pad, uh, of the pot for a shadow? I'm going to do a little extra color at the where it's kind of connecting or touching the pot as a, a deeper um, shadow. So I'm going to do just the same thing we did. I'm going to add a little more color. Because it's wet, it's just going to kind of spread out naturally. That's called a, a bloom. It's actually a really nice feature of watercolor. But I'm just going to let that that kind of be a little darker right next to the pot. So what I'd like to do is if you could show me your pictures. I don't know, can we see everybody? Like if everybody lifted your, your um, paintings, I'd love to see what you did. Oh, lovely. This is what's so incredible. Everyone has their own unique way of doing it, and they're beautiful. Thank you for showing me. Thank you so much. Lovely. Oh, I love the colors everyone picked. Nice. Well, thanks for joining us today, and have a beautiful rest of the day during this hot day. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So it bled in a little. You know what? It's an impressionistic. Yeah, I know. That's
that's how you do it. Oh, lovely. Still got to do it. No worries. You know what you're doing. Let me see. That's okay. That's okay. You are being creative. And that's wonderful. You're welcome. Oh, you're welcome. I enjoyed it. Good. Well, good. Good. Okay, we got to get kicked up now. You know, because you all are here, I can show this to you. I stamp that, okay? A greedy. And then I go around the edge with, actually, I use a Q-tip and um, like the ink from either a pen and just go around so you can see it. And then I pop it out with, with tape. But, you know, I don't want to write it. You can, but I'm, al I'm always so worried. It's like after I painted it, I don't want to mess it up but you certainly can. So that makes it really an easy way to do it. 